Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting landscape brush stroke and I'm going to be sipping on my coffee. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, fluorescent pink, green oxide, chrome yellow, Mars black, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, and burnt sienna, which I'll call rust. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like to, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil for drawing a sketch, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, I have a number 10 round synthetic brush, and I have a number four round synthetic brush, and I will refer to these as small, medium and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch up those sizes too if you'd like to, but that's what I'll be using. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same kind of paint and brushes and, you know, even the pencil. It's all there for you. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're drawing a sketch. So this is going to be a basic outline of our paintbrush, the area of paint, and the landscape itself. So I've got my pencil out. I'm going to give you a couple of markers. We're going to connect the markers, and then hopefully we'll have something that resembles the shape of a paintbrush and a landscape. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a series, again, of markers, and then we'll, we'll find a way to connect those markers. So up at the top of my canvas, I'm going to come all the way over to the right-hand side. I'm going to make myself two markers at the top, which will be where the top of the paintbrush is going to go. So I'm in maybe about two and a half, three inches. That's going to be one marker. Then I'm going to come in maybe about two inches, make myself another little marker. I'm going to come down the right hand side of my canvas. We're going to make only one mark. It's going to be maybe about a quarter of the way up your canvas. So if this is about halfway, you can just kind of split the difference, put a marker somewhere in that vicinity. <clears throat> I'm going to make one down at the bottom of my canvas, which is going to be if this is the center of my canvas, I'm about maybe an inch or two to the right of the center. Make myself a little bit of a marker in through there. I'm going to come on the left hand side of my canvas. I'm going to come up about halfway up my canvas, make myself a little bit of a marker in through here. And then I'm going to go about another inch up, make myself another marker in through there. And then I'm coming all the way up to the top of my canvas. This is going to be about two inches from the top of my canvas, making myself a little bit of a marker in through there. I have two more markers to make, and they're right about here. So this one right here is about dead center in my canvas from left to right, and I'm about a quarter of the way down my canvas. So you want it to be lower than this mark in through here. So I'm a little bit lower than that, maybe by about two inches, and then I'm at about the center of my canvas, so somewhere there. And then I'm going to go over to the right about two inches and that two or three inches and then down about an inch, inch and a half, make myself another marker in through there. So that's all the markers that we have. Now we're just going to connect the dots. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
We'll do a simple one first. We're going to connect this dot to this marker in through here. So this is going to represent the tip of the bristles from your brush. I'm going to take this and I'm going to give myself a big huge sloping or sl swooping kind of marker in through there. So that's going to be that one. I'm going to do a similar line with motion from this dot to this dot. So here I'm going to actually bring this in a little bit in through this direction, maybe to about, I don't know, maybe about halfway between here and here. You can swoop this in like this. We're going to be meeting this marker down here, so I'm going to just bring it down and give myself a big swoop in, in like that. And of course yours doesn't have to be exactly like mine. This is just meant to imply the motion of the paint. Then we're going to give ourselves our paint brush. So I'm going to connect here to here with a, a little um, kind of jagged line. That's going to be the ends of the bristles. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this in a continual kind of, I'm going to curve it just a little bit out like this and then just bring it up. And then I'm going to do the same thing for here. I'm going to curve this in like this and then just bring it up a little bit higher than you did that right marker or the right side and through here. And then you can just kind of connect these in a diagonal fashion. This is going to um, bring you up to the top two markers. So this is going to be the little metal part of my brush in through here. I'm going to connect those two. This is wider than my top marker. And then I'll just give myself a little bit of a little line in through there. And then just kind of connect these two like this. And of course you could make this into whatever style paintbrush that you want. I'm just doing a nice maybe one or two inch flat bristle brush, which is what I use quite often for my painting. So something like that. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to tackle my landscape area. So I have this marker in through here. This is a, a little bit over half um, um, the height. So this was my halfway marker and then this one was a little bit higher. I'm just gonna take this one and go straight across with it. So I'm just gonna kind of give myself a little bit of a line in through here. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. This is gonna um, break up our land from our water and it's like a lake or a pond so it doesn't have to have a straight line to it. And then I'm going to connect this marker to the one down at the bottom with a diagonal line. So this is going to be our dock or our walkway that we're putting inside of our landscape. And again, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. I think I want to make this a little darker so you guys can see it a little bit better. There we go. And then this one right here is just a diagonal line that of course doesn't have to be straight. And then I want to make one more line where I didn't put markers because the marker is going to be within here. So you're going to come down this area, maybe about two inches. This is going to be a piece of land that's going to sit in front of our water. I'm going to bring this down to the bottom right hand corner and I'm just going to make myself like a little bit of a um, not necessarily a hill, but I'm thinking this as like the edge of some of a like a little landing area or something like the, here's the dock, then there's a little bit of land and then it's going to fall off into the water. So something like that. And that is all we are doing for our outline. So when you got this done, you can put your pencil away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting our background white. So I'm going to use my large brush and I'm going to be using white paint. You probably could have guessed that though from the description of the step. But um, I'm not going to do any special brush stroke. I am just going to be painting the entire area in with white paint. And I know it seems kind of a little silly because the canvas is already white from the store. So this canvas that I buy is what they call pre-primed which means that it has been um, it has been coated with a protective layer on the on the raw canvas that is called primer and that primer's purpose is to provide a layer to which the paint can adhere to so if you don't have the primer on the canvas then the paint may look like it's sticking and adhering properly, but by the time it could peel off, it could chip, it could do all different kinds of, you know, non 
friendly things if it doesn't have the proper adhesion to the canvas itself. And the primer is not to designed to be the final coat. It's not the, the coat that is going to be UV protected. It doesn't have any um, kind of staying or um, archival type of qualities. Its main purpose is to provide a, a layer that the paint can stick to. It's not meant to be the final coat of the painting. So if you have a white canvas you're gonna, and you want it to look white with paint, you definitely want to add a layer of paint on top of it because the acrylic paint or oil paint is designed to be UV protected, it's designed to be water resistant when it fully cures, whereas the primer is not. So same thing holds true. If you buy a black canvas because you want your background to be black, you still want to put a layer of black paint on top of that surface because the, the manufacturer has put a layer of black primer on it, not black acrylic paint. So it's just a good, you know, good thing to know because you, you know, as a person who has not painted very often or you're, you know, you get that white canvas and you're like, oh my God, it's already white. I don't have to do anything to it. Just know that if you want it to withstand the test of time that you'll want to put a layer of actual paint that's designed to, to cure in a durable fashion on top of it. And then we're going to use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your layer of white paint on your white canvas, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're painting our sky. So that's gonna be this area in through here. I'm using my large bristle brush and I'm gonna be using blue and white paint. And I'm just making this to be like a little sunny day. So I put about equal parts of blue and white and not a lot on my brush. I'm gonna bring it all the way up to the top in through here, giving myself a pretty clean line as it is uh, meeting that white area behind it. And then what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be applying my paint in a circular fashion. I, my, for me, I most likely am not gonna pick up any more blue. I'm just gonna pick up white paint on my dirty brush. And what's gonna happen is my sky will get lighter and lighter as it comes down towards my horizon line, which is that next line that you see down there. And I'm using this circular fashion, so it just looks like maybe there's some beautiful clouds just kind of drifting by throughout my, throughout my painted sky here. But you could certainly make yours stormy. You could make yours you know, into whatever you want. As you get towards these bristles of the brush, I'm just kind of bringing it right up to them. Same thing with this edge over in through here, just bringing that light blue or whatever color you have on your brush at that point right to that area. And then I'm just gonna bring this all the way down to the horizon line. And then we will be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your sky done, you can just wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our water, which is gonna be the next area down in our landscape. I'm using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are blue and white, but I'm also gonna use a little bit of green and a little bit of brown because <laughs> for me, this is kind of representational of a lake or a pond or something that's not way out in the ocean where I'd have these crystal blue kind of waters or deep dark blue kind of waters. So I feel like I might have some, you know, some reflections of tree, neighboring trees or I don't know, other earthly kind of color. So I'm gonna use a little green and brown because to me that's what I see when I think of like a lake or a pond. So I'm gonna start at the bottom, which is gonna be over here, work my way towards where it's gonna be, we're gonna have a little island or a distant piece of land up there. I'm gonna have it darker on the bottom and get lighter and lighter as it goes up towards the top. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of blue and green on my brush. I'm gonna be using a left to right brush stroke as opposed to circular or a diagonal. Sometimes when you're working around a corner like this, you might 
tend to want to go diagonal, but if you can keep your brush going left to right, that'll make it look a little bit more natural. I just picked up a bit of brown on my brush to get a little bit of brown tones in through here, maybe a little bit over here. Now I'm gonna pick up a bit of blue and white. I haven't washed my brush. I'm really just kind of looking to make these colors look like they belong together. So for me, by not washing my brush, it will allow these colors to speak really well together. And I'm just gonna kind of get them to blend in, down, in through here using a left to right brush stroke. Oh, when you get along this edge, you might not be able to get it super clean around this edge where it's going to meet your white um, area. So what I do is I will make a wet line with my paint right along that edge and then I'm going to immediately while that paint is still wet start moving my brush left to right. So that way what I end up with is an area that looks like it is transitioning and it doesn't look like it has an outline around it but you might find that that process doesn't work great for you and if, in that case you can just kind of maybe do a couple of layers to get that edge smooth. We're going to do a little detail around the edges once we've got this whole um, landscape done anyways. So you'll have ample opportunity to modify that when we get into that, that section of the painting as well. And I'm just kind of continuing to add mostly blue and white at this point as I work my way up towards the horizon line. But Again, I want it to be a little bit lighter, the lightest when it gets up to that horizon line. So I'm kind of working with a little, you know, array of medium tones in through here. And right about now is where I'm gonna start really getting it super duper light as it goes up towards that horizon, <laughs> as I move back down here without, um, without any thought. <laughs> My brush just moved down there. I don't know what happened. Now I'm going up towards the top of my horizon picking up white paint as I'm coming up here just getting along this edge and I'm going to continue to leave my little pencil mark visible um, just so I know where my land is going to be meeting my water so you can go right up to it you if you paint over it, you'll probably still be able to see through it anyways and see that pencil mark through it but if you just go right up to it, you'll still be able to see it and it'll be your guide for a future step. So when you get done doing this, we are gonna utilize this same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the base coat for this little patch of land in through here. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm using are brown, white, green, and black. And in my head, I've got some like little sandy area kind of in through here. And then there's gonna be a lot of brush or um, like gra long wild grassy stuff along the edge and maybe some long stuff down in through here. So I want my base coat of this area to provide me with a kind of a nice deep base for the that foliage and the wild grass and stuff that I'm gonna be putting on. So I'm gonna kind of do my middle sand area. I want this the center to look like there's a little bit of sunshine and we can see um, some of that sand or dead grass or lighter grass, whatever's gonna be in the center. But as I get along the edges, I'll have that a little bit darker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm loading my brush with brown and white to start and I'm gonna be doing a dotting technique in through here. You know, I think I'm, I didn't say I was going to use this, but I'm going to use a little bit of yellow too. Now that I've got this on here, I think I want to add a little bit of yellow into this mixture. So I have brown, white, and yellow on my brush at the same time. And I'm getting this to look, I'm just using a dotting type of technique. You can bring it all the way to the edge of what's going to be your um, dock or your walkway and then I'm just going to be doing this dotting type of technique so it adds a bit of texture in throughout this area and it looks like maybe it's some um, either sand or dirt or something that will be provide a center kind of area in in here for us and again just brown white maybe a little bit of yellow is happening right now so I can get this color on here I'm bringing it all the way to the edge where it's going to meet that water in through here and I'm just using this dotting type of technique 
Once I have this center area in through here, what I will do is I'm gonna put some darker areas kind of flanking the edges of, or the bottom and the top of my um, land area and that my front, this will be my front land area. We have a distant land in a little bit that we'll be doing as well. Um, so now that I've got this kind of center area happening, I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm picking up black, green, black and green, and maybe a little bit of brown. And this is gonna provide me with this really dark base to this um, area that's gonna be near the shoreline or near the, the water's edge. So I'm just kind of dotting it at this point. In a, in a minute, I will bring some of these up into uh, and cross over my land. But right now I'm just kind of dotting it into this area, making sure that it intermingles with that sandy area a little bit. So just crossing it over. This will give us some different sections or like a nice transition into the underbrush of the these dark areas that I'm doing. So right now, green and black and maybe a little bit of brown is what I'm picking up, making sure I go all the way up to where these two areas are gonna meet. And then once I get there, I can start just kind of pulling up a couple of little pieces of wild grass or sections of wild grassy type of areas. Does You don't have to go hog wild at this point where we are gonna be adding some additional detail onto it in a little bit. This is just kind of getting this wildness to start showing its beautiful little face right now. And then I'm going to do the same thing down in this bottom section at the bottom of the canvas. So again, just green, black, and brown is kind of where you can, you can start with this area, doing a little bit of dotting here and there. And then once I've got that dotting on there, I'm bringing it to kind of transition with the sand. So I'm kind of overlapping it just a little bit in through here so they start talking to one another. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna bring maybe just a couple little pieces up in through here. Not much on the edge of this one because I'm gonna have all kinds of other little wild flowers and stuff, but this is definitely gonna give you that shadowy area underneath where the wild flowers are gonna emerge from. So now that I've got that done, I will be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can just wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our distant land. So I'm gonna be using my bristle brush. You could certainly use a smaller brush if you wanted to because it's a very kind of tiny area back there, um, but I love my bristle brush, so <laughs> I'm using this one. Um, so what I'm, the colors I'm gonna be using are mostly green and black, and I'll probably use a little bit of brown as well. I'm really just looking to have this way off in the distant, distance, maybe a little silhouetted by however, um, because it's far away and I want it to look like it's got some, some dimension to it, so I'll be using different um, intensities of my color. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna put a little bit of all three colors on my brush. So I have brown, a little bit of black, and a little bit of green, all three colors on my brush at the same time. What I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna make myself kind of a messy um, line going left to right where my water meets my sky. So I'm just gonna use my brush something like this to get this on here. It does not have to be a perfectly straight line because this is a piece of land, so land does not have to be even when it meets the water area. And then once I've got that line on there, then I'm just going to start dotting my illusion of trees off in the distance. But I wanna make sure that they meet this bottom left to right line. I don't want those two areas to look disconnected. So at times you'll see my brush go a little bit left to right as, I, as I'm down towards the bottom area of there, just so I don't have, um, again, a straight line and then dots above it. I wanna make sure that they kind of transition into one another pretty well. And you can have tall trees, you can have short trees, you can have green trees, you can have black trees. I'm just gonna alternate using these colors on my brush so that way every time I go to pick up, I'm picking up maybe one time I pick up green, the next time maybe I pick up brown, the next time maybe I pick up black. And without washing my brush, because I'm not washing my brush, 
what will happen is I'm going to get a good variety of those tones as I'm, go, as I'm working my way through this area. And I'm not doing a whole heck of a lot. I'm just making sure that I've got something to me that resembles some distant trees, the illusion of them. And if I've got some dark spots and some light spots, that's going to make it look all the more natural. I suppose you could even put like a little beachy area down at the shoreline if you wanted to. You could do that with some yellow and white if you wanted to, or you can just leave it as is because I think it looks pretty darn cool. You could put reflections in the water if you wanted to, but I'm digging mine kind of the way that it is. So I'm going to move on to the next step, which is going to be with my medium brush. So you can put your large brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're painting the dock part. Um, not the poles, but just the the platform, the dock platform. That's what we're painting. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm using are black, brown, and white. And I'm just looking for this to look like it's wood slats that have been weathered by the the water, atmosphere, air throughout time. So mine's going to look very weathered. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with all three colors on my brush at the same time. I have black, brown, and white on my brush at the same time. I'm going to re-identify kind of the edge of this. But to me, these are going to be wood slats. So I don't need a perfectly clean edge. So I'm going to just kind of start up at the top. And every now and again, maybe I just bump it out a little bit. I want to make sure that I get it as far overlapping my land this um this other area that we did just so we don't have any gaps of unpainted canvas between the um the land and your dock and i'm just going to bring it all the way in through here you can see my edges are a little bit uneven and that is on purpose and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to make myself a whole bunch of horizontal lines so first i'm going to while this edge that I just painted is a little wet, I'm going to just kind of work that in so, again, I don't have a diagonal outline to it. I'm just going to kind of work that in to the main area as it's drying. And then what I'm going to do is I'm making myself a whole bunch of horizontal lines of these three colors in a chaotic manner. So when I do this, my I and my brush is probably going to want to do them diagonal because of this line in through here. So the trick here is to try and stay horizontal. So when I do this, I'm going to watch. I have a horizontal line that's already given to me, which is the bottom of my canvas. So I'm going to just do a few that really kind of speak to that line and then I can just kind of follow them. But Again, your brain, because you're seeing this diagonal line in through here, will most likely want to paint some of these lines in a diagonal fashion. So just kind of, if you can keep yourself kind of straight on that one, it would help. And I'm gonna put maybe a little bit more lightness over here on the left-hand side. I am using a good amount of paint on my brush so that way I can get these colors, not necessarily to blend in 100% with one another, but blend a little bit. So that way they look like they are, you know, part of the same piece in some areas, but I don't want it to over blend because I still want to have some of these little dark streaks that are going to resemble the little grooves in between the slats of the wood. So this to me, when I do a step like this, I really try and be carefree with it. Like I just picked up some brown with my dirty brush. I, I like being carefree because if I, if I sit and think about it too, too hard, then it becomes really systematic looking and I might not get that natural look to it. But you know, if you wanted to count your number of slats and make sure that they're larger down here and smaller as they go farther away from you. That's a totally different style of painting that is excellent. And if that's the way that your brain wants to work, then so be it. Feel free to, to emulate that, um, that style in your painting. But for me, I'm just going for a nice carefree look because I've got my, my painterly brush up in the right hand corner that is just enjoying the process of creating this, this landscape. So again, you can get yours to be as, 
you know, systematic and perfect as you want, or you can be nice and carefree as I'm doing and just kind of get the illusion or the impression of these um, slats of wood. I'm digging this a lot, so I think I'm just about done. I might add a little bit more lightness over here on the left side. And then I am going to be utilizing the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your dock painted in here and you've made any little modifications that you want, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're doing the base coat for our paintbrush. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm using are brown black, white, rust, and yellow. And how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, a base coat of brown, this is gonna be a base coat of gray, and this is gonna be a base coat of rust, yellow, and white. <laughs> so I'm gonna just color in a flat color. So I'm using my medium brush. I'm using just brown paint for the handle part of my um, brush. You could certainly Paint yours whatever color you want. Maybe your favorite brush is black, or maybe your favorite brush is white, or, you know, we are going to put little details on it later, which could imply lots of um, wear and tear on your favorite brush, or maybe yours is a brand new spanking new brush that you want to paint that doesn't have any life or, or use evident use onto it so you can really make this into whatever you'd like it to be so I'm just bringing this brown all the way down to this section in through here then I'm going to paint this middle section with black and white or a gray color I didn't wash my brush I'm just going to take a little bit of black mix in a little bit of white just get myself a medium tone of gray paint somewhere around there and then I'm going to color in this middle section with my gray paint so I'm having mine looking like this is going to be like a metal piece to uh, my brush. I guess you could use a smaller brush to um, paint this on. So if you're going about it and you're like, mm, this brush I'm using is a little bit too large for this, you can certainly switch to your small brush. But I'm going to go ahead and finish mine with this brush in through here and just bring this gray area all down into this section. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect at this point. We're just kind of getting it on here. And then I'm going to wash and dry my brush to do the bristle part. So washing and drying my brush. And I'm going to be using yellow, rust, and white. So you could pre-mix yourself like a... Um, medium color in through here like that but I think I'm gonna just use those three colors on my brush at the same time so it's going to provide me with um, some textured elements to the bristles so I'm putting yellow rust and white on my brush at the same time and then I'm going to paint these in the direction that they would be kind of um, coming out of the of the uh, base of your of your brush but I want to get this upper area in through here just to make sure that it ties into um, the main area of the brush and then I'm just kind of using my brush to put these strokes in the direction that the bristles would be would be going so something like this and then just bringing them into my pencil areas or pencil marks that I had created on that original um, that original outline. And then we are going to be utilizing our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish this front land area. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm using are green, yellow, white, rust, brown, and black. So I'm using all of my colors except for blue and pink, which I suppose you could use those too if you want to, but I'm going to skip those colors for here. So really what I'm looking to do is just add a bunch of life into this area here. So I want some kind of um, 
grassy, bright grass that's going to be along the edges and kind of merge its way into this area. Maybe some, some tall pieces of grass and some wildness. I like my wild pieces of nature. So what I'm going to first do, I'm going to add some, some grass along the edge, but I don't want to make it dark grass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my green and my yellow and kind of mix them together so I have this nice, a vibrant, like springy yellow, maybe a touch of white in, in there as well. You can really, you know, have yours dark if you want to, but I'm going to just utilize a little bit of this lighter version of grass to give myself a lot of sunshine and some good energy along the edge in through here. You could certainly make these longer pieces. You could make them, I'm making mine kind of work their way into this sandy area. So it looks like maybe, you know, just around the edges is growing grass because it's closer to the water. Or, you know, use your imagination when it comes to creating wild pieces of nature. And then I'm gonna get it to just kind of slowly blend in with this, um, this other sandy area. I'm gonna put some of it along the edge of this section of this um, wildness that's happening by the shoreline. And again, this is just gonna give it that extra bit of life. I'm gonna utilize this color to add some little tips of, of life coming up in through here, something like this. I think I'm gonna also, as I'm in this area in through here, I'm gonna use this lighter green, but I'm also gonna use a bit of the actual regular green and probably I'm thinking I'm gonna pick up a little bit of just yellow and white as well. So that way it ends up giving me some brighter pieces. So I'm just picking up yellow and white right now to give myself a couple of additional really bright little pieces coming up over the edge. And for me, when I'm making these wild um, pieces of nature, to me, it's a lot of mark making. So I'm doing dots, I'm doing little swipes. I just wanna give the illusion of life and dimension. So I don't necessarily have to know all of the different kinds of flowers that I'm painting or all of the different pieces of grass that I'm painting. I just wanna give the illusion or the impression that there's a whole bunch of you know, lively life that's happening around the edge of this particular piece of land. And that's the way I, I like to kind of dictate my, when I'm doing wildlife or wild grassy kind of areas is I like to let my brush kind of take over and give it lots of energy and stuff. I think I want a little bit more darkness and um, maybe a couple of richer colors over here. So I just picked up a little bit of my rust and um, I'm gonna just kind of, oh, and black too. I picked up a little bit of rust and black. So I'm gonna give myself the silhouette of a couple more little pieces in through here. I can use the corner of my brush to give myself these little almost like stems of sorts. So if you want there to be a little bit more dimension and it's looking one note or there, it doesn't look like there's um, enough shadows in there, you can always pull in some of these darker colors. Like I've, again, I'm using my rust a little bit and a little bit of black just to give myself a little bit more of information throughout this back area. And then once I've got this back area nice and fertilized <laughs> as much as I want it to, what I'm gonna do, I think maybe just a little bit more of my fun grass coming in through here. And you know, just have, let it be exciting to you. Step back and look at it from a distance and see if it's everything you want it to be. I'm gonna put some big ones coming up in front of here, but I do wanna wash and dry my brush because over here I used some black on my brush and I'm gonna want these to be pretty vibrant and look like they're closer to us. So I want there to be a lot of light in them and with black on my brush, I, I might have run the risk of muddling my colors a bit. So I'm gonna use a lot of rust and yellow and white throughout this area. This is gonna be, I'll refer to as kind of like my foreground or my flout, my wildness that's closest to us. So I just put some rust paint on my brush and I'm gonna kind of give myself a footprint of where I want these really like maybe tall, wild pieces of shooting reeds of, uh, you know, 
long, grassy, flowery type of um, areas. I'm going to overlap it a little bit into this darkness that we put down at the bottom. I want it to overlap so that's going to give you a sense of dimension as the viewer is kind of looking through the painting. They'll feel like they're going from here to here to here to here to here. They'll travel right through the painting. So if you, if you have the ability like we did on the um, dock to make it larger as it comes towards the bottom of the canvas, that is going to add that dimensional element to the painting. And it allows that viewer to travel through, through the painting, which is an excellent or a very cool experience to, to have. And then once I've got that on there, now what I'm gonna do without washing my brush, I'm picking up some yellow and white and I'm gonna add some bits of highlights throughout these beautiful pieces of wild, wild whatever that I've created <laughs> throughout my grassy area here. And again, you can have yours really super bright, you can have yours dull, but the, the idea to making it look like you've got dimensional elements to it is you have to have some contrast to it. So if this was the same as what's behind it, there wouldn't be any contrast and you wouldn't be able to see the difference and therefore you wouldn't get the drama or the, all of the information that, you, that, you would, that you're looking for if the, if the contrast isn't there and if you can't see the difference between one area to the next. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more white onto my brush to get some of these to pop out just a little bit more. And I'm just going for some tall, slender type of um, flower type grassy stuff that's just kind of growing along the, the water's edge in through here and giving myself some good dimension to it. And of course you could add flowers, you know, a distinct flower if you wanted to, but I'm just going for the interpretation, interpretive kind of dance of mother nature. And then once you've got this done, you can, um, we're gonna utilize our, we're gonna use our medium brush for the next step. So you can put this large brush away, take out your medium brush, and of course, fiddle all you want on this, like I will probably do. Take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so for the next step, we're gonna be painting the posts that are gonna be on our pier. I'm gonna want these to be uh, have a good perspective to them, so I'm gonna have them very small as they're far away from the viewer, and they're gonna be very big as they get closer to the viewer, which is gonna be on the bottom right. I'm going to be using my medium brush. I'm going to be using black, brown, and white. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. But I'm going to start with black and brown on my brush at the same time. So I have both colors on my brush. And this is going to allow me to make them look like they're wood of sorts. Um, I'm going to give myself the base or the um, structure of them is gonna be just a long rectangle. I'm gonna have one, two, three, I'm gonna have another one in through here and then another one way over here. And they're gonna get wider and wider and farther apart as they get to the viewer. So I'm gonna start with this one right here. This one is right on the edge of my canvas. I'm gonna go about halfway between here and my um, land line. And then I'm just bringing this down into my dock or my walkway about, I don't know, a half of an inch or an inch or so. So just something right about to there. The next one that I'm going to do is right about here. So this is going to be my vertical line that I do. And again, um, try and keep them vertical. Because we have this diagonal line, your brain's going to want you to make them diagonal. Just really try and keep them in a vertical type of way. I'm going to make this one a little bit wider than this one in through here. Of course, this one's off the canvas a little bit, but I'm going to make this one a little bit wider just to show that it's getting closer to us. I'm bringing it into my dock a little bit in through here. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of a ledge at the top. I think I'm gonna do that for this one too, just a little tiny bit off there. And I'm gonna go into my next one, just reloading with some, some brown and black. I've got it right about here and I'm gonna bring it into my, um, my base land in through here. And I'll just widen it up so it's a little bit wider 
than the one that I just did. So just kind of watching that one as my guide. And again, I'm just right now using black and brown on my brush and I am, from where I sit, I can see that I've got some nice variations in the tones. Um, and if you're doing the same thing on your end, you'll probably notice that you've got some nice wood looking green going on. It's nice and dark because maybe these are painted a different color or maybe they're in the shadow a bit more. My next one is gonna be really far over here. So I'm gonna have this one right about here. This is going to be much closer to us. So again, I'm just doing my vertical line, bringing it all the way down to my dock or my walkway or whatever you'd like to call this piece of um, structure that it's walking on or that you can walk on, the pier of sorts. And then I'm just gonna make this one wider than that one. So I've got this, just need to put a couple of long strokes on here and I am using a good amount of paint so I can get pretty good coverage throughout this um, for this particular step. I am going to be putting a little bit of detail on them in a minute but right now I'm just kind of utilizing a, a pretty heavy coat of paint but you can certainly if you wanted to do more details or more layers you could certainly um, not use as thick of a coat of paint as I am. And then mm, I think I need this just a smudge wider if I want it to be, um, make it look a little bit closer. I'm gonna make it just a, just a little bit wider. So it really gives the illusion of being nice and close to us. And I wanted it a little bit wider than this one up here. So I just widen it just a little bit and then I'll do the one that is the closest to us way over here in the bottom right hand corner. So this is gonna occupy this whole area right here. I'm coming in about two inches and I'm going to color this whole area in. I'm gonna bring it up right about, I would say about this tall and I'm coloring in this whole area. So if that was your favorite part of your painting, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I probably should have forewarned you that we were gonna be painting this area all in with our post, but I forgot to tell you that part. <laughs> and then I'm gonna just kind of put a little head on it in through here. And I'm just gonna color this whole part in with my brown and black. And then what I'm gonna do uh, before we go on to the next step, I'm just gonna give a little bit of dimension to these posts without doing much. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white paint and give them a touch of a highlight on the top of the, um, of the top of them, on the top of the top of them, just to make it look like there is a three-dimensional kind of element to them on the top like this, like the sunshine is hitting it a little bit. You could also bring down a couple of light streaks down the side of it. So just adding these little bits of, um, of an additional color onto them is going to give it a little bit more of a dimensional element to it. Like it's got a little bit of wood or maybe it's a little weathered. You could also bring a touch of black, just straight black underneath the edge of these little caps if you wanted to, if you wanted it to look a little bit more. Mine's already pretty dark, but if yours was lighter, you could put a little bit of black right underneath that cap and that would give you a little bit more of a dimensional element to it. And then we are going to be utilizing the small brush for the next step. So once you've got your posts on here and you have as much of a dimensional kind of element as you want, you can put this medium brush away in your water cup or wherever you'd like to. Take out your small brush. Of course, you see I keep playing with my. <laughs> you can take out your um, small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our flower pots, which you can put on all of these if you want, or just a couple of them. Flower pots and the rope that will connect our posts. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna be using rust, brown, and white. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna first do my flower pots. So I'm just gonna have them on these two um, posts and I'm just gonna do a very simple kind of U-shaped pot 
we'll call it like a flower pot bowl kind of thing. <laughs> and you can have a flat color or you can add some dimension to it. If you want some dimension, just maybe put a little bit of brown on the bottom of it or, you know, it's going to be mostly hidden with the flowers as it is. So this is just giving you a little bit of color um, underneath it. I'm going to go do my other one. So again, I'm just going to do a little U-shaped pot that is a little bit wider than my post itself and just coloring it in with rust and again if you wanted a little bit of dimension you can put a touch of the brown at the bottom or you could even put black at the bottom just to show a little bit of shape or form to it then I'm going to be doing my I'm going to have some rope that's going to attach all of these so how I'm going to do this is I'm going to have brown and white on my brush at the same time, about equal parts of each. And what I'm going to do, so I have um, a place to go, is I'm going to make a dot on each one of these posts. It's going to be a little bit below the top and just somewhere where they can... I have a place to go. This is going to be that little hook that's going to hold the rope on here. And you can have it to the left. I wouldn't say go any farther than, like if this is your halfway point, I wouldn't bring it to the right too far. You could go like halfway or anywhere on that left hand side. That would make the most sense. At least in my head that makes the most sense. And I'm going to bring it somewhere in through here and then maybe somewhere in through here. And then I'm just going to with that white and brown on my brush at the same time. I'm going to connect these and as I connect them with this arcing line, I'm going to get a little bit thicker or I'm going to push it harder as it comes towards this one in through here. So over here, I'm just using a little, I'm not pressing very hard, just so I get a little kind of a more of a slender line. Same thing with here, just giving myself a little bit of an arcing line when I come in through here. And you can have this arc as far down as you want to. They don't have to be arcing in the same exact way. I'm pushing a little bit harder on my brush right now so it gets a little bit wider. And then when I go to do this one, I'm gonna press pretty darn hard. I'm just kind of watching my, my prize, which is the other marker. So pushing pretty hard with my brush. And I want this to look like it's kind of got a natural um, bend to it, so just trying to take let gravity take over and have a pretty natural bend in there. And then I need one more um, coming off this other side in through here. So I'm going to push my brush pretty darn hard. So that looks like it's the closest to us. Once I have that on there, I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up black paint. I don't think I said black but I'm picking up black thing. I meant to say black, and I'm doing these little hooks where the, these meet. I'm just doing a little C to create this hook area. I'm gonna put a highlight on it in a second so you can actually see it. But what I did black, now I just picked up a little bit of white on my dirty brush, and I'm putting a little tiny highlight on this hook that's holding that on there like that. Then I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put some texture along my rope. So I'm going to be using just white paint. If your brown and white is wet, that's okay. It'll make it look even more natural. So I put white paint on my brush and I'm just going to do these little arcing marks on the piece of rope. So just little arcing marks along that piece of rope so it leads the viewer to um, assume that this is kind of a twisted rope and we're seeing like the shadow in between these little twisted marks. So you could of course have yours much more complicated or more, um, more detailed than mine, but I'm just kind of going for the illusion here. And I'm gonna go ahead and come on over on this side and of course, as I'm coming over on this side, I'm using more paint, I'm pushing harder, so I can get these bigger kind of marks as I go through this area in through here. And then we will be utilizing the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your rope and your 
uh, little flower pots all nice and figured out and placed wherever you'd like to place them. You can wash and dry this brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our paintbrush. I'm using my small brush, my small paintbrush, <laughs> and I'm going to be using blue, white, yellow, brown, mm, maybe some pink, maybe some black, maybe some rust. <laughs> I'm using a lot of colors on this and the reason why is because this is wood and I want there to look like there's some wood grain in it. This is going to be bristles of a paintbrush so it could have lots of colors in it and this is going to be a shiny piece which could reflect anything in the atmosphere and it's a paintbrush so it could have every color on your painting on it in a you know because if you look at my paintbrushes they have all kinds of different colors on them. so I'm going to start with the handle I'm going to use a little bit of rust paint on my brush and I'm going to just rub it in give myself a little bit more wood grain look to my um, to the handle part in through here I'm going to take a tiny bit of black paint and give myself a little bit of a shadow type of area coming down this side so it almost looks like it's three-dimensional along the side here just making sure I've got this little bit of an edge in through there I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel I'm gonna to pick up a little bit of white to give myself a little highlight on the top of this handle in through here and here and then maybe pick up a little bit of brown and rust just to get it to blend in just a little bit so I'm just looking for a little bit of a highlight maybe on those edges to tell the viewer that the top of this might be a little bit on the flatter side that just gives that little bit of an illusion and then I'm going to tackle this piece in through here so first I'm going to work on this little side similar to how I did the edge of the handle I'm going to put a little bit of darkness on this side so I picked up a touch of black and I'm putting a little edge in through here. And if you go outside your lines like I did, don't worry about it. We'll figure that out later when we do the edges. I'm still picking up a tiny bit of black paint so I can get this metal part to almost cast a little bit of a shadow on the area next to it. So maybe it's casting a little bit of a shadow on these bristles themselves in through here. I just picked up a little bit of water on my brush to get this to blend in just a little bit more and then I'm going to put some shine on the top of my um, this area in through here so I picked up a little bit of white and I'm going to add these little streaks of highlights in through here I'm going to pick up maybe a little bit of blue and white paint to add maybe the illusion that it is reflecting some of the sky in it so because this is what I'm deeming as like a shiny um, piece to the, uh, to the brush, I can really have it reflecting anything. It can reflect some pink, it can reflect some blue, it can reflect any color I want because I'm saying it's shiny. So it can, it can really reflect anything. I'm putting a couple of little dark areas over here on the left hand side just so I can give it a little bit of of dimension maybe I've got um, some little uh, pieces that bump out a little bit so I can do a couple of little extra highlights in through there and of course you can certainly play with this and make it as fancy as you want I think I'm gonna put a little spot of pink so again you I'm gonna have pink in my flowers so I feel like I want to kind of say oh some pink got onto my brush and through there or maybe a little bit of yellow Oh, maybe some yellow got onto my brush handle in through there and of course you know this is one of those things that you can really just keep having fun with with adding little bits of color here and there the more color that you kind of add into it and you know preserving a bit of that original gray that's what's going to tell people that it is on the shiny kind of side so I'm just kind of fiddle in with mine. I'm going to go ahead and go down to the bristles. So my bristles, I want them to look a little three-dimensional. So I'm going to add some lightness in through here with my predominantly my white. 
and maybe a little bit of yellow just to show some more dimension through the bristles. And then I might need a little bit of shadow between some of the bristles, but I'm gonna start with just white paint on my brush and I'm coming uh, and giving these little streaks along the edges of these bristles in through here. So that's gonna tell the viewer that they are in fact kind of lifted up a little bit. Now I'm putting white and yellow on my brush at the same time to just give more dimension in these bristles in through here. And they're gonna just kind of meet into the front ones. This might give it enough dimension where you don't need to add any additional shadow um, as the bristles are meeting the, the brush part itself, but that'll be a personal call on your part. I'm gonna put a couple more white streaks on this edge over here just to bump that up a little bit. And then I want it to meet this, the, the painting itself, and it's gotta have maybe little shadows underneath it and maybe some of that paint color. So I'm gonna put a little bit of black and brown on my brush to give myself a little bit of shadow underneath some of these um, bristles along the edge here, maybe a little bit of blue too. So just kind of putting a little bit of shadow underneath those so you can really see them pop out. I'm gonna wiping my brush off, picking up a bit of blue because this blue is nice and, um, nice and powerful and I can see it a lot in the painting so it'd be cool if I could emulate that a bit on the tip of this this brush in through here so something like this is totally working out for me giving it a little bit of blue on over here and again you can really have fun with how much of this paint you want the paint colors you want to incorporate in your actual brush itself and you know I think I'm I think I'm pretty good with it I might just tweak it a little bit more adding maybe a little bit more shadow up in through here as the top this part is meeting the bristles, but that's kind of all I'm gonna do for that. You can certainly tweak yours as much as you want. And then we're gonna be using our medium brush for the next step. So you can just get this done, put your small brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting some flowers in our pots. So I'm using my medium brush. You could certainly use your small brush if you wanted to, or you could you know, design these in a more realistic fashion, but I'm just going to give you the impressions that they're just filled with some beautiful summer or spring flowers. And I'm gonna be using a loose uh, dotting, stippling type of technique for it, similar to what we did for the ground and the landscape only we're using a smaller brush so it'll look like it's got more distinct dots and stuff. So I'm gonna have some greenery that's gonna kind of hang down the sides of it and then I'll have some nice colorful areas on the top. So I'm gonna use a lot of colors. I was gonna name them off green, brown, rust, yellow, white, pink, but you know. <laughs> I'll name them as I go through the process. So green and brown is where I'm gonna start. And I've got both of these colors on my brush so I can create this greenery that kind of hangs along the edges. I use the brown as well because I like to add that shadowy type of color along with the vibrancy of the green. So you can really have as much fun with this and make it as vibrant as you want it, but I'm just looking to do a couple of areas. I don't wanna do the whole thing with it because I wanna immediately add my flowers, but using those two tones is gonna to allow you to have you know, light spots and dark spots. And you could of course use your yellow and your white in that as well, but I don't want that greenery to take, to be the focal point for me. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So I have green and brown. And of course, this one is much smaller, so I don't really need to do a whole heck of a lot. Just adding a couple of little pieces of the greenery, just kind of hanging out over the edges, maybe a little bit in the front of the um, pot. I think I wanna add one in the front of this pot, just kind of coming down in through here. But again, that's gonna be your, your call. And then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And for my colorful flower part, I'm gonna be using pink and yellow are gonna be my dominant colors for the flower, 
but I want there to look like there's dimension to them. So I'm gonna start with pink and rust on my brush at the same time. So I have pink and rust, and rust will act as my, at that shadowy color. And I'm not gonna dot the whole area, I'm just gonna dot some of it. So I've got both pink and rust on my brush, maybe a little bit more pink, so that will start to show up as well. And I'm kinda gonna just give myself some of the area, similar to how I did the green, some of the area where I want these flowers. I'm not gonna overdo it because I wanna um, add the bright, some bright flowers on top in a second. And if I was to paint this whole area with this color in through here, then it'd make it a little bit more difficult to get the brightness on the top. So uh, pink and rust is what I have right now. Just kind of getting some of the darker tones in here to just represent some of that shadowy type of area. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm just gonna wipe it off on my paper towel. I'm gonna pick up some yellow and pink is gonna be my next color combination. And I'm gonna start adding some areas with yellow and pink. And I am using heavy paint right now with a lot on my brush. You might find that you would prefer to just use less paint and let it kind of layer on there, letting it dry in between and then just letting um, layering it on. But for me, for this step, I just wanna go for that nice thick look of some lush flowers. So I'm really using some heavy paint and the pink and the yellow are going to make a pretty peach color as well as, you know, identify themselves as yellow and pink and pink, so I'm gonna have a lot of different tones and colors throughout these flowers, which I think is great. And then once I've really got a nice assortment where I feel like I've got um, the majority on them here and where I want them to be placed, I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint. I think I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel and then pick up a tiny bit of white paint and I'm gonna add these little bits of highlights throughout it. So my paint is definitely really wet right now. So as I'm adding these bits of highlights, I'm really trying to be conscious about not over blending. So I'm really just making these little tiny speckle dots. I don't need to overdo it. I don't need to add um, lots of heavy dots in this um, area, I'm just kind of doing these little tiny speckles so it looks like the sunshine is just kind of glistening off of them a little bit. So just these little tiny white spots is gonna give it a whole lot of dimension. And if you wanted to, you could certainly pick up maybe some yellow, green, and white. If your um, greenery wasn't dark enough or light enough for you, you could certainly elevate that a little bit. But I think I'm pretty good the way that I am here. And then we're gonna be using our, we're gonna use our small and our large brush for the next step. So you can put your medium brush away, take out your small and your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're painting shadows. I'm gonna be using my small and my large brush and I'm gonna be using predominantly black and brown black and brown, but when I get to my big shadow up and through here, I might use some white too. So if I use that, I'll call it out. I'm gonna start with my shadows down here. So in my head, my sun or my light source is way up in the air, high, high up. So I'm gonna have my shadows directly below these ropes and the posts. So these um, shadows of the posts won't be coming out too far. The, I'll have shadows of the, pl the pots on the surface as well as shadows of the ropes, but I won't have much of a shadow of the actual post because if the sun is high up in the air, it would be directly down and the shadow would be, it's right there. Um, so I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to add a little bit of water to it and then I'm gonna dip it in my black and my brown. I don't need much paint on my brush at all. I can even take it and kind of dab it on my paper towel. And then I'm gonna do my shadow of the rope first. And this is gonna be, if the rope is here, it's gonna be right um, in, f right kind of in front of that, um, the side of it. So I've got this little kind of 
arcing line like that. Then I've got a little arcing line like this. And the water that I'm using on my brush is allowing my um, shadow to be see-through or translucent, which is exactly what I want it to be. And then as I go towards here, and I'm just using like a light kind of sketchily brush stroke. I think I need a little bit more black on my brush for this one. Not, I, I'm not getting enough. It's better to be cautious than it is to be aggressive when it comes to doing shadows. So here we go, I got, I got enough now. And then I'm just gonna kind of rub it in like this. And then I've got my last one that just kind of disappears off the bottom of my canvas. And then I have my two planter ones that are gonna get a little bit of a shadow. So it's gonna be just a messy shadow right underneath here that's gonna occupy like kind of a circular type of, of shape. So I'm just kind of moving my brush left to right, giving myself maybe some little areas where they're, you know, you can see through the, the little pieces of the flowers. So just I'm making this, oh, let me move this, you might be able to see it better. Something like this, just making myself a messy little shadow right underneath that pot, uh, that plant pot. And I'll do the same thing with this one right in through here. So just a little bit of watered down black and brown paint on my brush is gonna create my shadow right around the base of this post. And you can just kind of keep working it until it looks like it is a nice kind of messy um, shadow from that structure above. And then I'm gonna do a shadow over here. So your shadow of your paintbrush does not have to take on the same light source that the shadow in here did because it's this is a surreal painting. So the, sh the light source on this brush could be somewhere else. It could be way over here. It could be down here. It could be wherever you want it to be. And the shot or the light source in your landscape can be somewhere else co coming from a different direction. So don't feel that you have to make this shadow be exact, follow the same rule as this shadow. You can make the shadow into whatever you want. So I'm going to start by making a really dark shadow with my small brush right along the edge of my paintbrush and coming down into here. So I'm using black with a little bit of water on my brush just to kind of get my shadow started right along the edge like this. And again, I have black with a little bit of water on my brush. I want to, um, my brush is gonna lift off from the surface right about here. So that's where I'm gonna have it um, going long that way. But right now I'm just kind of getting this soft shadow, but dark started right near the object itself. And I'm gonna bring this down right into here. So it kind of uh, allows the viewer to think that this whole section of paint is three dimensional of, of sorts. You could also utilize maybe a little bit of brown or something else, some other color to clean up the edge around here. If you wanted this to be a nice crisp edge, I just put a little bit of brown on my brush. So you could certainly clean up an edge with something like that if you wanted to, or if yours is perfect the way that it is, just let it be. And then I'm going to switch brushes to my big brush. So I have my big brush right now and I'm gonna add my shadow on the area in through here. So again, I'm gonna use brown and black on my brush at the same time. I don't have a lot. Then I'm gonna take my brush, I dip it in my water, and then I dab it on my paper towel. So again, I'd rather have too little or too watered down paint than to have too much. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this kind of taking on the shape of this part of the brush. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of um, width in through, in through this area, and then I'm gonna get it to kind of disappear up in through here. So I am, because I have a good amount of water on my brush, if you feel like you have too much, just give it a good squeeze in your paper towel. I'm going to work this as it's drying and get the edges of it to kind of dissipate into that background white color. And this is one of those steps that, because we did use a white background, 
it definitely makes it easier on us because you can at any time, I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel, you can at any time pick up a touch of white paint and get these edges to blend in with one another. So this is a tr an excellent background to practice this style of um, fading your shadow, letting your shadow kind of dissipate because you because we use that white as a background, we, we have the ability to get it to blend in really easily and just kind of keep working it until it gets into that soft, um, that soft look that we're going for. So what I'm doing is I just kind of keep wiping my brush off on my paper towel as, as I'm working this paint while it's drying. So I just kind of keep moving it around, getting it to um, kind of fade into that background a little bit. You could get yours to be a little bit more gray, you could get it to be a little bit more brown, whatever visually works for you. But the um, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the canvas. I'm really just very lightly touching it as it's drying because if I start pushing too, too hard, I'll lift the paint right off of the canvas. So right now I'm just lightly touching it to get it to um, almost, I'm almost air drying it with the light touch that I'm providing with my brush. And then again, if you needed to, pick up a tiny bit of white paint to get these edges to just look like they have gently kind of just blended into one another. And if, you know, worst case scenario, just paint over with white and start over. But the idea is get it nice and dark right there where it is meeting the, um, the paint itself or the paintbrush itself and this little object over here. And then just get that uh, shadow to dissipate into the distance. And if you have any cleaning up on your edges to do, now would be the time to do it. And then we are going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your great shadow on here, you can put your big brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm going to sign it with my small brush and I'm going to sign this one in the bottom right and I'm going to put it right on this post with black paint. <laughs> so it's going to be very disguised, but you can put yours wherever you would like to. You can put yours, you know, out right on the walkway if you wanted to. You can put it as big as you want and you can make it whatever kind of mark that you would like your first name, initials, the date, whatever works for you. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very creative and unique landscape, and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.